Okay, here is a 12 back Star Wars Kenner figure with a Japanese sticker. So it's from 1978. It's a Luke Skywalker in farm farm boy outfit, and it's in pretty good condition. It's not perfect. It's got a couple of faults. So I'll tell you about those later. Uh, it's got yellow hair, which is the common original version of Luke. There's a brown hair version as well. It's a US card with the Japanese sticker. So these are sold in Japan. So this was sold by Takara in Japan, and they're more famous for making uh, the original Transformers. And you can see it's the uh, Luke Skywalker, and then it's got all Japanese writing, and then you've got the little Takara symbols, the little character there, and then it's just exactly like the US carded version. This, I mean, in those days you could get 12 backs on French cards, Meccano, British Palatoy, and Dutch Clipper as well, and uh, Italian Harbuck cards, plus, um, what else could you get it on? Spanish maybe? I'm not sure if they did 12 backs in Spanish cards. So that's a good view of the Luke there. He's a nice figure, one of the first. And the lightsaber, the second version of the lightsaber. This is not the telescoping lightsaber. If this had the telescoping lightsaber, it'd be worth a fortune. And this is just the regular push down lightsaber. And you've got the piece of cardboard between the two feet. So this is the Luke in Farm Boy. Well, you can see by in those days how the sculpting was rather limited. Still, this is a classic figure and uh, very desirable to collect collectors now. And you've got the logo there, which is based on the Hildebrandt art. So that's what I like about these original Star Wars cards. They've got that image as well. And you've got the white price sign, which could have the price written in then. And then you've got the back, which is your typical US 12 back card. And you've got the 12 characters there. You've got the sand person, the C3PO, Death Squad Commander, Han Solo, the Chewbacca, Princess Leia, the Luke Skywalker, R2-D2 with the first version of R2-D2 there, Chewbacca, Darth Vader, Stormtrooper, then Kenobi and the Jawa. So, and then you've got the instructions for pulling out the telescopic lightsaber. But by then they changed to the just the push down lightsaber. So it's very rare to find a telescoping lightsaber. And if you do, it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. You've got the land speeder there, X-wing, the Tie fighter as a drawing there, and then up. What was offered in the USA is a display yet to cut out proof of purchases and you could then get this display. There's the proof of purchase. So a lot of cards nowadays have been butchered. They have that miss missing, this little blue symbol there which is the proof of purchase. In England we had to cut out the actual uh, names for to get free offers from from Palace Wise, so we had to cut the names off. So if you've got that cut cut out, then it's definitely a British card because that's what Palace what Palace Wise made us do. So I did a lot of cutting out when I was a kid. Okay, so it's quite a nice card. It's quite decent. Uh, the biggest defects are with the bubble. You can see there it's got a, a crease there where it's and that's probably caused at the manufacturing point, it was just probably too much heat and it's caused the bubble to heat up a bit there and then there's a little crack at the base of the bubble as well, I don't know if you can see that too well I'm going to make another video in a while because and I'll show you the defects more in detail on that video I'll take photographs and stuff as well but as you can see it's a really nice card, I've got a Japanese Stormtrooper as well and I've got a C3PO on the 12 back as well with the Takara stickers on it. They say the C3PO has got a different head sculpt. The version I've got hasn't got the different head. It just looks like the regular US version. 
and they say the difference between the US cards and the Japanese cards is the actual glue the US cards have a waffle pattern on there on the bubble where it's stuck to the card whereas the Japanese versions don't and the, the most famous version is the Darth Vader which has a white background whereas the regular version has a yellow background and the head sculpt on Darth Vader is meant to be different as well the Japanese version of the Stormtrooper has got a spelling mistake it's spelled Stormtrooper two, two O's instead of S-T-O-R-M and that's your 12 back loop for you it's a nice card I've got this on 21 back as well with a sticker on it and I've got a Palatoy Return of the Jedi version plus the Gunner version on the Kenner card and a Brazilian Power of the Force which is kind of nice as well so excellent figure classic comes with two versions yellow hair all the versions I've got I've got the yellow hair and the brown version hair is a lot rare, rarer still it's a classic figure from the a long long time ago in a galaxy far far away I guess so uh, decent man I really like it uh, as it's a classic I mean I, I'll give this what 10 out of 10 it's just mega desirable pictures cool classic design you got Luke what, looking at staring off into space wondering what the hell is going on with his life if he's ever going to get off the moisture farm and join the Starfleet it's an excellent card brilliant I, 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 quite, I do like the Japanese sticker on it it makes it a bit more you, you can just see through the sticker the Kennesite logo underneath I don't know what type of um, back this is because the uh, I mean you can say it's a 12 back A, 12 back B, 12 back C, I'm not sure which version it is. I've got a book that tells me but I haven't bothered to look at it yet so... And it says that the offer expired May the 1st 1979 to get the display so if you wanted to get one that's 30 odd years ago. These cards came out in 78 so really nice I mean excellent figure Luke Skywalker original can't go wrong with that you can see the defect in the bubble quite well and I think I've ex that's all I know about 12 backs really they're the first cards some of the most desirable I guess so hopefully my this camera's picking up my voice, otherwise I'm wasting my time. Let's see. So you've got the give you a good view there. This one, if you notice at the top it had stars on it as well. Pretty cool. And the Star Wars logo. This this logo only is the only one with the two metal bands on the side. The Re Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi just have a single and then you've got the tri logo which is totally different as well and the power of the force as well but the Star Wars cards are the best if you ask me Hasbro re-released this figure in 2005 or 6 with the uh, same card, different back and uh, a modern figure and it looks pretty cool as well so if you can't afford this version get the re-release it still looks pretty decent and you can see there the bubble defect and there's a bubble defect at the bottom just a slight crack almost can just pick it out there just there great figure classic the original Luke on 12 back there's also these cards came in 20 backs and 21 backs as well 21 back 21st figure hi i'm in a local cemetery and i thought i'd just show you um as you can hear just what i've picked up today at a london film and comic con so i thought i'd do a quick haul update 
in the graveyard for some reason as it's on the way home so I thought I'll combine the two so this is what I got really nice graveyard so this is Brompton Cemetery in West London right next to the London Film and Comic Mart and as you can see it's very nice beautiful day very peaceful as well okay one of the first things I got was this uh, Return of the Jedi um, Palatoy 65 back uh, Chewbacca there's the back typical Palatoy back pretty good condition pretty good price so very nice the dead agree as well. I also got this Star Trek figure, uh, it's Gowan, the Klingon, and it's distributed by Bandai, so this must be the Canadian packaging. It's got the language in Spanish and French. And that's the back Playmates. So, very cheap, two quid, two pounds for that, bargain. Not best condition, but still not bad. I've got this in a German box as well, by Bandai as well. This is this R2D2, it's on a 12 back card, but the bubble's loose. So it's been really stuck down, but done really badly. The top of the bubble is really loose as well, but it's a piece of history. 12 back card's not brilliant, it has quite a lot of sticker damage at the top by the Luke and Leia symbol. You can see the back, 12 back. But I got this for £15, which is a bargain. Because it's a, a mint loose figure. The original R2-D2 without a sensor scope. Sitting on top of a grave. So Star Wars collecting and the peacefulness of the graveyard. My, it's a sunny day. Excuse me, uh, saving the best for last is, let's see, Princess Leia. Don't want to leave that out in the sun too long. It's Princess Leia on Return of the Jedi. On a 77 back Kenner card, this costs a lot more than what I wanted to pay for it, but you know what the hell. So it's on a 77 back, made in Hong Kong. Nice card, little crease at the top, but nothing too major. Gun still taped to the inside of the bubble. And there you are, Princess Leia on Return of the Jedi card. So this is one of the most ret rare Return of the Jedi figures. Hence it's hefty premium. There you are. You can hear the planes flying overhead. And that's it. That, these are um, four things I got today. It cost a lot of money. This one especially. But sometimes you have to buy these things. Okay, that's my collection haul. And I'll do a proper update and review later. You know how I usually do them, so... I went to the Collector Mania, I mean London Film and Comic Con today, it was pretty good. It wasn't seemed a bit smaller than last year. Um, definitely more cosplayers, so it looks like it's going to eventually get taken over and there'll be more and more manga stuff, rather than the sort of stuff I'm into, like Star Wars, Star Trek and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, well, that's, uh, well, to each his own, I guess, but definitely less 
less less space this time and more interactive stuff than usual. So still, it was a good event. I spent about three hours there. Got some good photos and pictures. So it's worth going checking out. It's in London by Old School. It's about fiver to get in. So it's worth going checking out. Okay, this is um, the Marvel US Star Wars comic range. So this is just Marvel Age number 10. This is a complimentary Star Wars. I think this is the whole six episodes in one. And this is from the BBC. This is a, a reprint of number one. This is number one. Even back then, about 94, 93, it was quite expensive, 10 pounds in those days. Number two, US. Number two, reprint. Number two, British. Number three US, number three US, number three British, number three British, 12 pence. Nice cover there. Number four British, number four US, number five British, number five US. Back in, say, about 94, 95, it was uh, two quid for that. Stamp pound sterling. Number five, British. Number six, US. Number six, US again. Number six, US again. Number seven, so th that's all of uh, the original A New Hope and six issues there. Number seven was the first of a new lot of stories, Marvel. Number eight, Hate Against the World, love that rabbit. Number nine, number ten, blah blah blah. Eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, that's quite a good story that one, 17, nice artwork, I've got a Dutch one of these now, that's quite nice, uh, 18, Got 18 there. Okay, let's switch that off. Okay, here you've got number. What number is that one? 19, 20, 21. This one's signed by Dave Proud. Because that's signed, I've got another copy here. Just because not necessarily having something signed makes it more valuable. But this is the this the reason why this issue is signed is because it's the first appearance of Darth Vader. Okay. So I'm not going to show you the whole load because it would just take forever. And I know that other people on YouTube have more or less pub shown the complete set of Marvel comics. But you can see they're a really nice set. Took me about 10 years to assemble this whole lot. And you can guess what the hardest episode was to find. Yep. 107, that was the one that was really tricky. 
Okay, we're getting onto the Empire Strikes Back now. There's good covers here. Cool, they're stuck together. Back on Bespin. Pariah. Seraphine Eyes. This is quite a nice cover there. No, I've got quite a lot of duties here. But say 15, 16, 17 years ago they were quite cheap, these comics, but I just picked as many as I could. Late, the later issues are probably the harder ones to find. Some covers are painted, they look really nice. I mean, I collected Dark Horse for quite a long time as well, but they, it just got ridiculous, it just got too much. Whereas collecting the Marvels was something you could actually achieve. There's the original comic, this figure, this is, they've been action figures made of this cover. Another one there. Painted cover there. Another one there. Uh, this must be the 100th episode issue, sorry. The 100th issue of Star Wars Marvel Comics. And 101, 101, 102, and then this was the hardest one to find. It's 107. This was the last issue I needed to complete the set. And this issue is kind of scarce. So that's the pretty hard comic to find. 107. And there's just more duplicates of the 106 there, 104, a um, 105, a 106, which is for £5, it's described as very scarce, 103, another 103, 104, 105, some of the annuals. These are quite easy to find, still pretty cheap. Another annual there. The third annual there. Droids comics, these are pretty scarce. That's number three, number six. I got these in the record and tape exchange in Notting Hill Gate. As far as I can remember. That's uh, number seven. Number eight, number five, number one, another number one, number two, and that's that. So these are all my US Marvel comics. I've got an Ewoks comic somewhere as well. So these number one of the Ewoks series. Uh, these are the Empire Strikes Back, okay, because it's the 30th anniversary of Empire Strikes Back, we'll look at the Empire Strikes Back ones as well. There, uh, Empire Strikes Back. What else? So, Empire Strikes Back begins with 39, 40, same age as me, ha ha ha, 41 through the asteroid field. Okay, this is the Clone Commander helmet, uh, Captain Rex, and it's on sale at the moment, and I got it for a really good price, so I bought it for my nephew, and he'll really like it, and as you can see, it looks amazing. If only we had toys like this back in the 70s. Nice, decor there, the Rex design. The Boba Fett type antenna, the ridge from the Clone Trooper helmet, the sort of hybrid Boba Fett Stormtrooper visor. Excellent. Really good toy. Kids will love this. 
nice artwork on the box. You've got Cook Captain Rex there. And you've got the box tells you what it can do. It says, gear up for battle as Captain Rex leads the 500 of first clone trooper legion against the battle army droids while wearing a clone captain's distinctive helmet. And it shows you what the helmet can do. Where the batteries go, phrases and all that sort of stuff. And on the side is where you can try me. Hands above your head. Rex, do you copy? This is Skywalker, over. Destroy the Sith. We must. And that's fine. No one will be. That's the helmet, so pretty cool. Excellent. If I was a kid, I'd be so happy with that. I mean, I might if I can get one in London, I'll pick one up for myself as well. And just have it on display. Looks wicked. Nice item. Left behind. No one will be. Hurry, we must. I got a bad feeling about this. Trigger the explosives. I'd be proud to fight beside you anytime, anywhere. Rex, do you copy? This is Skywalker, over. Destroy the Sith. We must. Left behind. No one will be. Hurry, we must. I got a bad feeling about this. The name's Rex. You'll call me Captain or Sir. Explosives are in place, sir. Hands above your head. I'll read you, General. Look sharp, rookies. The mission always comes first, sir. You're exactly the kind of men I need in the 501st. Today we fight for more than the Republic. Today we fight for all our brothers back home. Trigger the explosives! I'd be proud to fight beside you anytime, anywhere. It's an ambush! The name's Rex. You'll call me Captain or Sir. Explosives are in place, sir. Okay, I just finished building this for my nephew. It's not didn't take too long, about 15 minutes. It's the main issue was adjusting the this band here to fit his smaller head. Because he kept on saying this bit here was rubbing against his nose, so. But even then, I've, I've adjusted it more or less as small as it goes, and it's still a bit big on him, but he'll grow into it. And this is sort of how it looks like being a, s a clone trooper. So, pretty cool. There you are. good piece it's I mean at the price it was a bargain and it does so many things Hands above your head. Left behind. No one will be. and it wasn't too is easy to build so you know and it's got lots of features and for fiver it's a bargain five quid so have one more statement. Hurry, we must. Hurry, you must. I'll read you, General. I got a bad feeling about this. Trigger the explosives. I'd be proud to fight beside you anytime, anywhere. Look sharp, rookie. Okay, just a quick look at this um, clone cheaper rifle. <laughs> It's not mine, it's my nephew's, but I thought I'd show it to you. Goes well with the helmet, I just got him, so... it down. There's bits there's a couple of bits missing, I don't know where they are. So it's just a pistol there. And, uh, 
this bit when you add this bit it makes a nice noise different sound. Then you can add this bit on, which goes on this way. that noise and then when you fire it makes a different noise again and then you just add this bit back on push it in quite a well thought, thought out toy, well designed, lots of play features, kids would love this. So, if you're into Star Wars and weapons, you might want to get this.